in but my But I also opinion. think, and this will, you'll definitely have an issue with this one. I actually think DeSantis had a way better debate than I was expecting. Mm. And I, I wa watched it twice. Mm -hmm. And when I went back and I listened, there was a number of lines where he got like really loud applause. So nobody laid a glove on him and he was able to get his talking points out. He got really loud applause. And mm. I think that uh, he comes out of this looking the best, to be honest. And I actually do agree with Kyle to some extent there. Um, you guys might remember the night of the debate after it ended, Zach and I were giving our commentary. And one of my big takeaways was that I thought Ron DeSantis did a lot better than I expected. Now, again, the bar was incredibly low for me. And I think a lot of people, which maybe is like why his performance seemed to be better uh, to me at least. Um, but a lot of people were saying that he did terrible and that he just, you know, was another complete embarrassment. And that's not really what I saw. I thought that DeSantis did better than expected. Um, he definitely didn't dominate the debate like Vivek did. But I think that Kyle's correct that no one really attacked him. I was expecting people to attack him a lot more. I was expecting him to have to be on the defensive a lot more. And instead, he kind of just got to give his, you know, pre-written talking point speeches. And he did a decent job. I thought he seemed relatively focused and energetic. And like I said, not as awkward as I was expecting him to be based on some, you know, viral clips that have been going around from the campaign trail. So I do kind of agree with Kyle there. I don't think DeSantis did you know, well enough to turn it around and like save his campaign. Ultimately, I still think it's a doomed campaign. Uh, but I do kind of agree with Kyle that DeSantis did better than expected. I think in the sense that we both expected it to be just a humiliating dumpster fire for Ron DeSantis. He absolutely did exceed those expectations. But yeah, I think he's still just a little bit too unlikable on a national stage and a, uh, not quite charismatic enough. I don't think I just don't think he has the presence to be able to carry um you know, a, a, a huge debate performance. So I, I still found it kind of middling. I would I would struggle to call it a win, but I would definitely call it, a, you know, better than we expected, you know, would be my analysis. Probably one of the most important things, like predicates that you could come into that debate as a candidate thinking, unless you're Vivek, unless you're like the freshman in that uh, analogy that I'm not torturing. But uh, I think DeSantis just needed to be there. He needed to not have any moments where he gets dunked on, and he didn't need to have moments where he dunks on other people. He just needed to be solid uh, because this debate is not going to change a 40 point lead. That's going to have to be done in the ground, on the ground in Iowa. Well, it's sad that you're both wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, um, Kyle, I thought Jonah Hill won the debate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something we can all agree on yes um no so here's my analysis with DeSantis I thought I agree that I thought he did fine like I didn't think he had any big mess ups I thought I had some answers that were kind of like weaselly politicians but whatever they all have those moments right <laughs> I thought he was totally solid and I expected him I put him as one of my predictions as a winner going in mm. because the bar has been set so low for him with all of the like let's find every awkward moment we possibly can of Ron DeSantis right. and you know convince people that he is like the weirdest human being on planet earth and he's a little weird but he's not the weirdest human being on planet earth so I do think that he exceeded the bar I thought he was perfectly solid but if you're Ron DeSantis and you were the guy that was tied with Trump in the polls for a while, that coming out of the midterms, you were the winner, you know, you were putting points on the board, like check the score or whatever. For you to lose the spotlight to Vivek Ramaswamy, for you to get outshone by like Nikki Haley, that's a big loss. And I think that his polling will probably go down just because this is with this divided field. If you have other people who are sucking up oxygen and getting attention, you know, it's got to come from somewhere. It's probably not coming mostly from Trump. And so that's why I think overall, in some ways, he was the biggest loser because he's so diminished from go, where he used to be. Go ahead, Kyle. He can't hold his past against right. him. The question is whether or not he won that particular debate. Well, well the way right. I'm looking at this is where, what are the polls going to do? Right. I think who's, they're, they're going to go up for him, for sure. I don't think See, look, I'm very moment. curious to that, Bill, because the thing is, is that DeSantis has slid, as Crystal is saying now, from 35, 40, all the way down to the RCP average, somewhere between 16, 17. Ramaswamy are already around 12. I was talking about this earlier in the show. Iowa, he's got 40% no name ID. People don't even know who the guy is. Mm -hmm. So if DeSantis slips from that and then Ramaswamy starts to get up, not only is Ramaswamy then potentially taking over Ron DeSantis, but then there's an entire media cycle about this guy came from nowhere and is now overtaking number two with an earn media that spirals Not there happening. people so. like to pick a winner i mean look all of this again as you said emily trump is above all of this yeah they're, they're all trump voters ramaswamy has no actual support these are all trump voters but, i think but, but i mean listen there are some people at least in iowa currently from what we can see let's say let's call it one third maybe let's call it uh anywhere between one third and approximately up to like 40 percent 
there's people who are not, they're, they like Trump. They have a lot of affection for Trump. They're willing to vote for somebody else, especially in this ridiculous caucus system, the whole, how does it work? It's like one, two, and then, you know, if this person goes away, then you can go and you can caucus with somebody else. They, they, they kind of like the whole, what is it? They vote with their heart. Um, in Iowa. So I think that in that scenario, I could see a, I could see a big night v- for Vivek. Vivek told them yeah. Trump is the best president of this century. Yeah. So why are you running? Listen, why I are you running? You. <laughs> that and makes actually, no sense. I really wish, uh, Emily, the moderators asked that damn question. If you yeah, believe that, be a good why are so, any look, of you running against Trump? I would, look, I would look, actually look. Have loved to see that question. Here's yeah. the thing. Everybody on stage was either a total Trump sycophant mm-hmm. or a Trump hater, except one person. Ron DeSantis. Interesting. It's true. So there were a bunch of lines. He hit lockdowns and the deep state and Fauci got a huge applause. He hit Soros funded DAs, huge applause. He did his line, which I actually, when I went back and watched it a second time, I thought he handled this brilliantly when they were trying to get him to answer, like, did Mike Pence do the right thing? He basically said, look, I've got no beef with you, Pence. You did the right thing. But then he went, why are we even talking about this, though? So Trump, or sorry, not Trump, LOL. Kyle Kalinske just made an interesting point there. He says, basically everyone on the stage was either a Trump sycophant or a Trump hater. The only person that wasn't was Ron DeSantis, right? And he's saying that, you know, as if that is a good thing for Ron DeSantis. I actually don't think that's a good thing for Ron DeSantis. And despite the fact that I think it makes him, you know, uh, more, uh, I guess, noble, I guess you could say, than the Trump sycophants like Vivek, you know, he's not as willing to go out there and just totally embarrass himself saying things like Trump was the greatest president of the 21st century. Um, So in that sense, obviously it's preferable, but as far as the politics of it, I think you have to pick a side at this point in the Republican primary. I don't think you can be in this like weird fence sitting middle ground where you're like, you know, I kind of like Trump, but I also kind of agree that he's a criminal. Um, No one wants that because it comes off as very mealy mouthed. You have to either be a hundred percent. I love Trump and he is the victim of the you know, woke witch hunt or whatever the fuck, or you have to be like Chris Christie or Mike Pence and be running actively against Trump and actively making the case against the MAGA movement at this point. Uh, Now, I don't think that's, you know, going to work out for guys like Christie or Pence at all. Um, But I also don't think Finn sitting is going to work out because ultimately that is the real litmus test for the Republican base. And they're not going to pick some fucking fence sitter in the event that Trump goes down and is not able to, it is not able to be their nominee, right? They're not going to pick a fucking fence sitter. They're going to pick someone that's a total sycophant. And that's why Vivek is doing what Vivek is doing. We're helping the Democrats. We should be focusing on the issues. He got a big applause on that. He said, kill people at the border, leave them stone cold dead. Got a big applause on that. By the way, I hate all of these things, but I'm just saying it landed. Special forces invading Mexico to attack the drug war. Huge applause on that. Mm-hmm. He's the only one who didn't get hit and wasn't a Trump sycophant and wasn't a Trump hater like Asa and Christie were. So I definitely think he comes out of this see, looking the best. Here's the thing, because the other piece is like, what did you think this debate was about? And to me, this debate is not about beating Trump. Right. This debate was about being the top alternative to Trump. Mm -hmm. And given the Republican base's affection for Donald Trump, the best way to position yourself as the top alternative to Trump is by being as Trump sycophantic as you possibly can. It's so beta. I think it's, it's so true. Beta. It is. I mean, yeah, like, 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 he's like, the yeah. best. I love him. Vote for me. He's I mean, the best. It is 100. percent It's totally beta. But at the same time that you say, you know, that you say it's beta, Vivek was the person who had the most like, you know, yep. assertive like vibes on the stage. Yes. And so much of this is about the vibes. He was the fighter. He drew the fire. He was able to parry the attacks. He was the center of attention sort of coming out of nowhere. And so the fact that, you know, he was the center of the show and DeSantis, who was really supposed to be the guy, was on the sidelines. You know, I think in terms of that jockeying to be the potential number two, I there's just no doubt in my mind Vivek won that away from DeSantis. I haven't, been, for like the last couple of months, been thinking every question that... It's all good. These politicians guys were younger. are playing. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> were younger. So in this scenario, Vivek, by defending Trump the most, can consolidate in this hypothetical like black swan uh, scenario, which is he the could only path, those, which the is way. the only path for any of these path. people. Yeah. So in that, what do I you don't agree? I don't okay, agree. Go ahead. First of yeah. all, these people, they're siloed off. They're in their own bubble. There was when they asked a question about like, if Trump gets convicted, mm-hmm. would you still vote for him? And like everybody's hand went up except Asa and Christie. When I look at that, I'm like, general election over. But we're not talking they're, about I, I understand that, but I'm saying, yeah. but okay, what's yeah. the ultimate goal? They're running for president. The ultimate goal is to get to the White House. Okay, so congrats. You might, mm. if Trump ends up in prison, you might have weaseled your way by sucking them off into getting into the position where you yeah, run against Biden. But you're going to yeah. lose. You're going to lose. So Maybe. I just look at this. I think 
to me, it's like, oh, Vivek's being called anti-establishment. There's nothing anti-establishment about this guy. First oh, I of all, know, I know. Uh, yeah, and it, when, you're, when you're snuggling up to the guy with 91 criminal charges against him, and you think, what, that makes you an outsider? And he was, of course, he was trying to be anti-war on the one hand, but then on the other hand, he kept bringing up China in a hawkish matter. He's called for war with Mexico over the drug cartels. Mm. I just, okay, but substance aside, I, don't, I think that that beta strategy makes you a beta. Like, I don't think anybody who's supporting Vivek is actually going to support Kyle Vivek. I, think, I agree with you, his numbers are going to go up after this. But I think it's fake support. I think they're Republican ultimately all going to vote for Trump because Vivek is telling them me, Trump's the guy. Republican <laughs> voters will see it as beta that Ron DeSantis is taking DC talking points I'm on Trump. Trump. That's totally that's the Republican I voter agree. perspective. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Yeah, let me, that's let me just just not <laughs> true. That's just not true. That's not borne out by all of the polling that we just looked at, guys. By all the polling that we looked at, still, uh, Ron DeSantis towers above uh, Vivek Ramaswamy, particularly if you look in early primary states. So I'm just not sure where they're getting this. Like, oh, uh, the Republican Party is just like all over Vivek. It's like this dude's like, you know, he's he's basically doing the kind of numbers that RFKJ is doing in the Democratic primary, right? Like, and nobody's taking RFKJ seriously. Like, oh, he's the real contender. He's going to rise through the ranks. No, he's just an oddball that's stealing some media attention uh, because, yeah, he's got like a fucking good shtick going. But I, I think it's really shocking that like people think it's going to go anywhere. I just Point. play devil's advocate in terms of like a possibility to another like a Trump actually getting outright defeated, which I don't think is going to happen. I think that mm -hmm. he would have to be sort of removed by going to jail or something crazy like that. But, you know, in Iowa and in New Hampshire, I'm looking right now at the real clear politics average and he's quote unquote only yeah. at 43 percent in Iowa and 44 percent in New Hampshire. That means a majority of Republicans are actually not with him mm -hmm. in those states yes. and are at the very least evaluating their alternatives. Right now, in both of those states, as it stands, Ron DeSantis is the top alternative. I would submit it is very possible that after this debate, Vivek moves into that position of being the top Trump alternative with all of the media attention. Americans love also like a fresh new face, someone we didn't hear about before, totally. who's new on the scene. Like we, Americans love that story, regardless of the political party that they're in. And so I think the fact that he outshone DeSantis and was the center of so much attacks from some figures on that stage that Republican base, by the way, really hates. I think that's very beneficial for him, and I think it's really deleterious for DeSantis. The math in Iowa is actually interesting. Mm -hmm. It does not match up to the general election math, but it does have DeSantis down by 26 points. And the fact that we're even calling that interesting is funny because we are still pretty far away from people actually going to caucus in Iowa. But uh, if Ron DeSantis and Vivek Ramaswamy start to become competitive in Iowa, what's important to think about is that is the reverse, basically, of what's happening. Now. I would just like to add that currently Tim Scott is starching. Vivek Ramaswamy even after the debate and so that's just what's weird about Iowa like Tim Scott is actually having a real moment in Iowa according to the RCP polling he's actually in third place with double the support of Ramaswamy even after the debate uh, pulling at 10 percent and uh you like looks like the RCP average for Vivek even after the debate is still five percent so still just meaningfully meaningfully far behind for him to be for people to be saying like in places like Iowa or New Hampshire for him to be like the alternative to Ron DeSantis as the second place it's like he's got a long way to go but Trump, Trump, was yeah, Trump was giving him credit though Trump was giving him credit too yeah. but at the, look this is why I hated DeSantis in the first place DeSantis didn't say one word about him it was when DeSantis was getting winning Florida by 20 points. It's when DeSantis was actually getting better headlines than Trump was that it started to drive him crazy. The one reason why I think it's a little bit different is Trump feels stronger today than he did about DeSantis several months ago when DeSantis was much nearer to him in the polls. And I think that Vivek does a much better job of actually playing ball. He's one of those where DeSantis clearly is irked by the Trump attacks. Mm -hmm. DeSantis also has hit back in like bailed ways. Ramos Miami will never do that. And I think it's actually a correct move um, whenever it comes to running again for this hypothetical number two to number one scenario. So if there is a situation where Trump attacks him, it will be because of this earned media, but I don't see that happening just yet because Vivek is still a flash in the pan in terms of this number, this amount of media attention. Think about the amount that DeSantis has had for almost, what, two years? Yeah. All throughout the COVID pandemic, up until the GOP primary, Vivek hasn't had anywhere close to that. It would, it would have to reach that level for him to begin to regard him as a serious threat. Look, I just look at Vivek as the Republican version of Pete Buttigieg. Mm -hmm. And I also look at him, and even though I agree with you, his numbers will go up after this, you know, there was a moment when Ben Carson 
was leading in the Republican primary. There was That's a true. moment when Herman Cain was leading. There was a moment when Carly Fiorina had a good debate and led for two and a half yeah. seconds. So yeah. I look at it, I look okay. at it kind of like that. And also I, I think just final point, I know I'm beating up on the guy, but like he is so politician y. And the whole thing about Republicans, which I actually gave them a lot of credit for, is that they are much more likely than Democrats to go, I don't want any of your politician nonsense. Hmm. And I just I get that stench from Vivek and it just it I Bro, th this is honestly like fuck all the haters in the in the breaking point comment section. Kyle has honestly summed this up remarkably well today. I think that he's coming at this with, the, you know, the objectivity that the Republican Party just can't look at their own party. And in a way, sometimes it's tougher for me and Gavin to like look like see the forest from the trees and like a weird progressive instance. But when you're talking about the Republican Party, you can just kind of go in there more clinically uh, and just kind of break down the polling. And I think that the what Kyle has laid out here, uh, you know, is pretty effective, like the uh, Carly Fiorina comparison. But yeah, totally. I think that's correct. And yeah, I honestly uh, I totally agree with you, Zach. Despite the haters, we're about to take a look at the comments section. Despite the haters, I actually do think Kyle's analysis is really on point here in this discussion. And yeah, it's really easy when you're a political commentator to get swept up in the news cycle and be like, oh shit, like everyone's talking about Vivek Ramaswamy right now. He just had this great night of the debate. He's, you know, everywhere I look, I can't go on Twitter without seeing his name. I can't go on any news platform without hearing about him. He must be the big thing. He is the Obama of the, you know, 2024 GOP primary. It's easy to jump to that analysis and to kind of fall victim to the shine, like the new shiny object politics, which I think is what Vivek Ramaswamy represents right now. And just be like, oh, he's the new shiny thing. People are excited about him. So he must be the guy. Um, and I think to some extent, that's kind of what Crystal and Sagar are doing. I think they're like really letting the media hype get to them a bit with Vivek. And Kyle's like, pump the brakes. I've been here before. This guy's not going anywhere. He's a total flash in the pan. And I totally agree with that, actually. It, it kind of reminds me, not to freaking brag, but it kind of reminds me of in 2020 or 2019, rather, before we even had a show. I remember that first debate. Kamala Harris came out swinging. She, you know, had her line against Joe Biden. That little girl was me. And then that night, everywhere you looked on Twitter, everywhere you looked online, Kamala, 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 you know, Kamala is the new Obama. Kamala is going to win. CNN was like, she's the number one, you know, most likely candidate to win the primary. Everyone, that was the cool thing to do was to predict that, you know, this was Kamala's election now that night. But I remember that night I was like, you all need to chill the fuck out. I, I, you know, we all saw the same debate. I know she just had a way better debate than Bernie did, but don't get it twisted. This lady ain't going anywhere. She sucks. She's a terrible communicator. She has terrible political political instincts. This is going to be a slight bump in the polls, but it's going to go down again after that. And I was 100% correct, correct about that at the time. And I think that in the same way, Kyle is very correct to identify Vivek Ramaswamy as a flash in the pan who seems exciting right now because he's new and he seems you know young and fresh and hip. But ultimately, he's not going to be the guy. No, and he's not going to get VP either, which is the one thing that Kamala was able to finesse with her like fucking political you know uh I, maybe she's just a cold-blooded like fucking deal maker behind the scenes but only when it pertains to her own like career as a ladder climber although she reached her summit apparently because she's never going to be fucking POTUS that's for sure um but anyway comments yeah. down here dude not very favorable to Kyle even though I basically agreed with him I mean I didn't like at first when he said that Ron DeSantis had a good night like I I don't think he quite had like a masterful performance but I think that the polling is all that matters so how did you make it out on the other side you know, he's still the guy for now. Um, so, I, yeah, I didn't take issue with basically anything that Kyle said. Uh, unfortunately, the fucking Breaking Points community just has some sort of weird, like, aversion to anybody that's not Crystal or Sagar that makes a good point from the left. You know what I mean? It's like if Crystal makes a good point from the left, she'll get like a little bit of hate from the uh, VP audience. But if Kyle comes in there and just drops facts the whole time, it's like, man, these people come unglued. Yeah, dude. Uh, it's really wild how much people seem to hate Kyle, here, I blew this up a little bigger so we can get these really big. Uh, Emily explains a Republican voter's perspective and Kyle's response is, yeah, well, they're wrong. Uh, that's the top comment. I also disagreed with that Republican voter's perspective. Like, who is Emily to de declare what the Republican uh, uh, voter's perspective are when it's not borne out by the reality of the polling? Like, you could say that the polls are wrong, but that wasn't really what they were doing. They were just omitting the polls and, like, only putting up the one poll that, you know, kind of, you know, satisfied the points that they wanted to make. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I think that Kyle was making a decent point about how, like, yeah, even if a lot of people seem to support the vague after this night, they're really all just Trump supporters that liked him because he was defending their guy, not because they liked him on his own merits necessarily. Um, 
but yeah, we got an, a lot of other really mean comments here. It's really nice that Crystal let her son in on this debate. Hey, come on, guys. I'm Crystal's son. Kyle's, Kyle's been doing this for longer than the entire <laughs> Rising Breaking Point network has been around. Like, he's literally been on YouTube doing this exact kind of political coverage from 2008 and was plucked from obscurity without ever having to fuck with a corporate entity. Like, what, what about that guy? Yeah, it's it's weird. Uh, Kyle being dissed in such a classy way made my morning. I don't really remember him being dissed. Nope. Uh, Kyle did most of the eating on that uh, on that debate. If I'm if I'm going to be honest, I didn't. Uh, he you know left very few crumbs behind with him. So yeah, this is just salty because people know that Vivek. Like people, I think this is a lot of people who really want Vivek to happen. And when Kyle comes in and it's like, come on guys, this is not going to fucking happen. Like nobody wants to see the guy like poo poo. Kind of like when you would come in and try and talk. Uh, some sense to Andrew Yang people back in the day. Gavin and I used to try and do this. We'd say, hey guys, listen, I know part of the, like some of the things that really draw you to Andrew Yang, because this was back when we were trying to recruit uh, like people to vote for Bernie Sanders. You have to talk nice to people when you're trying to recruit them to your political op project. Now we get to be rude. Um, you know, hey man, I understand like some, yeah, dude, the establishment's whack. And like this guy, he seems young and youthful and jovial, but let's talk about some young and youthful policies that come from a man with a deep history of standing up for the working class and not this fucking rich scum over here that wants to take away our entire social safety net like you know what i mean yeah 100 percent. i think that's probably correct but yeah I, I just don't really get why people have this level of vitriol for kyle i think that most of the points he was making in that debate were pretty sound and even if you disagreed with him i thought his presence made the debate a lot more lively and a lot more interesting um just having someone that kind of disagrees with what crystal and sager were saying made for an interesting dynamic so i appreciated that but yeah not a lot of love for kyle here that's so nice of crystal to have an affirmative action seat for kyle to participate um would love to see emily and sager's faces when crystal tells them kyle is going to be on the panel again if i was emily or crystal i'd be excited about that i'd be like dope that means we're gonna have a really lively discussion maybe a bit of a debate i don't really see what the issue is yeah it's so weird like i'm reading this one i loved watching kyle for a long time because i thought he was a good pulse on an opposing view of mine that helped me challenge myself and my bias but after a certain point he just became so hard line in his views that he isolated anyway what are you talking about kyle is so not hard line and he's so like nice and jovial on the mic like you want to talk about somebody that's hard line i'll call this guy this guy's just mad that kyle makes him look like a fucking idiot every time that he tunes in that's the reality of the situation uh right like every time emily's face every time kyle talks is pure gold yeah that's because emily's face uh, when kyle <laughs> destroys oh. like true conservative values it's like oh damn this guy is humiliating me and my political ideology in real time right here and he's doing it uh you know with a very friendly uh demeanor and candor right i mean i don't understand like like this is where it gives away the deal it's like yeah, Emily is Emily Jasinski is literally so economically conservative that she makes Sager look way reasonable, right? Uh, uh, I mean, like old school conservatism, like the like you know, this is the kind of lady that I think would be really ex like I think Emily's politics would be like she would be stoked if somebody like Nikki Haley was able to like you know really rise the ranks and like put the like Republic or Republican Party like out of the like shameful like Trump era and into the more like respectability politics era that they like longed for. Um, but it didn't even seem like they were anybody was that upset with one another. And I think Emily and Kyle had a couple of exchanges where they seemed to be on the same page. So that's why I'm like, why is everybody projecting here? You're just mad that your guy Vivek is not going to be the one. Yeah, exactly. Kyle's is the only one that's willing to be honest about that. And yeah, it does seem like, you know, Vivek is a very online candidate. A lot of his support comes from the online right. And there are a lot of right wingers that watch Breaking Points and a lot of like, you know, people that consider themselves populist right wingers that watch Breaking Points. And that's Vivek's lane. So I do imagine that there's quite a few members of the what are we calling the Vivek crew? There was the Yang gang. What's what's Vivek's crew called? We got to figure out a, a name for it, but you know, whatever you want to call them, the Vivek stands, you know, uh, they clearly have been watching breaking points is coverage of Vivek. They probably like what Sagar had to say about Vivek. And now here comes Kyle Kalinske to harsh their mellow and drop some facts and, you know, be honest about the fact that this guy is a total flash in the pan. Right. Um, but here's another interesting one. Well, not interesting. This one's just fucking stupid. It's corrupt to insert family members, friends, or spouses into a panel without acknowledgement of someone's ties. 
That's so fucking dumb. Kyle Kalinske has, like you said, Zach, been a political commentator on YouTube before Crystal and Sager were. I think Secular Talk is still a slightly bigger channel as far as subscribers go than Breaking Points is. If not, Breaking Points just barely, you know, just finally caught up to him. Um, and also, Kyle was a pretty consistent guest on Rising before him and Crystal even got together. So before clearly, he got banned. Yeah, before he got banned right from the from the hill. But, you know, they were collaborating professionally before being romantically involved. Um, even if they hadn't, I don't think it would matter. I mean, clearly, they're both political commentators that have a lot in common as far as their analysis. So it makes sense for them to this collaborate. This is just proof that people don't know what, like, fucking corruption or, you know, conflict of interest actually is. It's like, what are you talking about? You're not allowed to have your, your husband on your on your podcast. That, that's corruption. It's like, what are you talking about that's <laughs> corruption? You're allowed to have whoever the fuck you want on your show. You literally could book anybody you want. Uh, that is the rule. Um, you know, so I, that it's just, it's so ridiculous. They, 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 they said things I didn't agree with and, and they're married. Uh, uh, I'm upset. <laughs> exactly. Um, completely ridiculous. Kyle is the kind of guy that doesn't wash the pan because he decided to let it soak. See, this is ridiculous. Sometimes you need to let a pan soak. This is truth that anonymous 84, 7, 19, it's, it's like that, uh, it's, it's like that scene in Jane Silent Bob's strike, but we'll tell this cocksucker what's up right now. <laughs> 